Back into line he goes, ready for a start. And they're off in the FanDuel Breeders' Cup Juvenile presented by Thoroughbred Aftercare Alliance, Hurricane J, and Cave Rock come out to vie for the early lead. Curly Jack comes away running in the third position as they head down to the first turn. Hurricane J determined to have the lead. Cave Rock is right alongside. Forte is content to tuck down toward the inside in third, just three legs from the front. Curly Jack moves by that one, now takes third. National Treasure moves up from fifth, the lane off the rail, nearly five lengths from the front, verifying his sixth, wound up his seventh, blazing sevens is eighth. Lost Ark is in ninth. Congruent is last of the ten. 22.9 seconds. The time for the opening quarter. Cave Rock from the outside has the lead now by a half length. Headed up the back stretch. Hurricane J goes second three quarters of a length. Curly Jack is third. National Treasure is fourth out in the center of the track. Just over two lengths off the lead. Gap of nearly two more. Forte is fifth by a neck. Verifying alongside of that one. Congruent moves up three spots from last into seventh to the far turn. Blazing sevens. Lost Ark and wound up at the back. It was 47.01 seconds the time for the first half mile cave rock and national treasure they go one two now hurricane j backs up to third still within two lengths of the lead though then another length and a half to curly jack in fourth on the outside forte is fifth and forte is down toward the rail tries to pick it up looks for more running room switches off the rail from fifth to fourth to third but they're coming to the top of the short stretch and here comes forte cave rock has the lead national treasure between horses forte and then blazing sevens goes to fourth on the grandstand side, Forte takes clear aim at Cave Rock. These two going at it, final furlong of the juvenile. Forte on the outside, Cave Rock on the inside. Forte to the lead. Forte, I ran Ortiz Jr. to win the FanDuel Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Cave Rock second, National Treasure third. Blazing Sevens was fourth in one minute, 43.06 seconds. And Forte takes home the FanDuel Breeders' Cup Juvenile in impressive fashion. That Keeneland form continues to hold up here. A win over the track, proving powerful for Forte today. Michelle, going down the back stretch, I thought he actually came off the bridle at one point. He looked like he was backing up for Ired Ortiz Jr., but as soon as he switched out, boy, did he have his mind on running. Well, I mean, the, the turn of foot that he showed with that early move was just sensational. Right about here, he's just making this run. Cave Rock had to throw down early. He wasn't really accelerating until he starts to feel the pressure. Um, and look at Forte, just all the momentum on the outside here. He does do something good. He switches leads on time. Uh, we have Cave Rock, who was hanging on his left lead. I think that really hindered him. He was trying to fight on, but he was leg weary. I, I don't know if it was the antics or the fight with the one, but, you know, Cave Rock has some starch taken out of him today. You know, Cave Rock noticed Forte coming up outside of him, and that's when he finally switched leads. It was almost as if the move from Irad Ortiz took him by surprise, which was well-timed and which was intentional. He came up on the outside. He knows this horse has that middle move and has that ability to run the turns. You blow by a horse like that quickly, and he didn't have enough time to react. It looked like Cave Rock tried to battle back, but it was too little, too late. This is where Irad Ortiz is just biding his time and waiting. National Treasure going to be the first one to sort of make a move and start to confront his stablemate, Cave Rock, as they turn for home. But as soon as Irad switches this horse to the outside, huge effort from him today for Top well, It almost looks like he's backing up in the field at this point. They're getting away from him. He was much closer until Irad says, OK, let's go, buddy. He's some a smart horses, horse. Some of these horses need encouragement to continuously go, right? Like you said, he's a smart horse. If he's not being asked, he's saving his own energy. Um, he doesn't realize, oh, by the way, if you save some energy and you end up farther back, you have to work harder at this point. He's still a juvenile. So that was why as soon as he started to go back and Irad kind of shook up his reins, he was like, oh, we're still running? No problem. I've got this. And that... that aggressiveness that we saw from Cave Rock in the early stages of the race. Hurricane J did try to take the lead, but Cave Rock was too much for him to handle. And then down the back stretch, Michelle pointing out during the middle of the race, Juan Hernandez had Cave Rock so far off the rail, so far off of Hurricane J, trying to get him to relax, but he was still in a bit of a fight with him, still really having to hold him going down the back stretch. And that's really what took it out of his late kick that we've seen in all three races to this point. Yeah, somewhat, someone tangling with speed. I think we've seen this with older horses in, say, Jackie's Warrior. At the times in his life when he could be on the lead by himself, it was no problem to finish. When you do 
a race on the front end and you have pressure, it completely changes the way you're running, even if the speed is the same. The, the mental aspect of having another horse breathing down your neck is just so much harder on horses. Yeah, the fractions can be the exact same, but the, the pressure is there with the company. And you can see Forte, give him all the credit in the world. He was a superior yes. animal this afternoon. Full of himself on the way back to a little prance there, similar to that kind of jiggy jog we saw before the starting gate today. The son of violence. He's out of a blame mare by the name of Queen Caroline. Purchased right here at Keeneland, a Keeneland grad. Congratulations to his breeders, Southgate Farm, as he makes his way back to get his picture taken in the FanDuel Juvenile today. And it starts even before you get the picture taken or the go official. You start talking derby. Is this horse going to be the number one in the derby potentials and derby futures going forward? He beat the best I mean, so far. I mean, right you now. talk about logins and others that, you know, might have had to sit this one out, but uh, he's the champ and he's certainly going to go home with that hardware as far as the two year olds go this year. And his two turn form as well has just been simply brilliant as he gets faster as they go longer and each and every start. We won't know the figures for a few days, but I'd be willing to bet he runs a better figure today than he ran in the Breeders Futurity, which was better than what he ran in the Hopeful, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, the progression is there. You're continuing to see that development, which is what you want to see. He's in the Silks of Rapoli stables today in partnership with St. Elias stables. Big day for them tomorrow as well as they look forward to nest and this definitely uh, sets the table and kicks off their Breeders' Cup with a bang. Cave Rock second. National Treasure was third. Blazing Sevens was fourth. No real surprises other than the top two being in the opposite order of the way they were bet. And I think if you look at the early wagering, Forte was taking his own lion's share of the money. I mean, he was down at one point to three to one. So I think people were looking at Forte and leaning heavily on him. When it comes down to it, we're looking at a day like Breeders' Cup. We have a lot of, um, you know, people are just betting the favorite because they don't follow as much racing. And so I think that that gets inflated sometimes. But the, the early money, a lot of it went to Forte. Well, they are waiting for the Winner's Circle celebration. Once again, Simon Bray will be presenting the trophy as uh, a member of our honor team here at FanDuel and also on the board of the Thoroughbred Aftercare Alliance. Their work so important. Aftercare is paramount to our industry and the success going forward as we need to take care of our athletes. Forte, he's living a good life right now as he is taking care of all the backers that made him your second choice here. And you can see... I mean, he doesn't look like he just went a mile on the 16th beating grade one horses, does he? Not at all. He's near perfect in his career, too. I mean, the only kind of time he had a little bit of a hiccup was in the Sanford. I'm not sure what the excuse was for him that day. He was a little wide, perhaps just having that opportunity to be covered up, to be down along the inside and to take those deep breaths as they go down the backstretch before the rider asks him is what pays off in the late stages of his races. How happy do you have to be to be Todd Pletcher in this spot now? You know your horse runs well around one turn, two turn in the slop. He's run at multiple racetracks and he's done well. When you have a horse that's two years old and can mentally handle all of these different things, you've got a runner.